You okay? Is that why you feel happy? Yeah, do you feel happy there? Okay, you can stay with mommy then, that's fine. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to today's video, which we may well have Bumble for the duration of because Simon's got the smoothie maker out and Bumble hates the sound the smoothie maker makes. So he wants to come and sit with his mummy, which is fine with me, but you can sit with me, my sweet angel. Um, right, today's video is, it's a light-hearted video. I am by no means the person to tell you guys how to spend your money, but I'm basically gonna run through five habits, which would be pretty good to kick for 2021. Right, so shopping habit number one to break in 2021 is one season wonders. Now I know there will be lots of you who have bought plenty of one season wonders. And what I mean by one season wonders is something that you purchase. And this just from my own personal point of view, my personal experience has always tended to be trend led items. I used to buy, as I've spoken about before, every trend possible. There would have been trends that were seen on the runway, which Zara kind of did a version of, and I would have lapped them all up. And these were things, they weren't trends that had any longevity, because there's nothing wrong with buying into trends, nothing at all. I have the Chanel Dad sandals. They are a trend. They're obviously the ugly shoe trend. But for me, those sandals are something which I will wear when they are no longer a trend, because I love comfort. And I just think that when it comes to trends, there are things that you can buy into which just suit you as a person. But... There were many, many, many things which I bought throughout my 20s which were wrong on so many levels. I remember one thing in particular. I think it was a skirt or it could have even been a skirt and a top set. It was from Zara, which Zara textbook they are the leaders on the high street for being able to replicate and create their own affordable alternatives to designer and, and catwalk looks, if you like. And I remember I bought a Celine inspired, and I can't remember what year it was from, but it was the year where Phoebe did all of the like art, like prints. So there was like paint splatters and smudges and all that kind of thing. And I bought, again, I can't remember. So you're gonna see on the photo that's gonna pop up on screen, but I think it was a skirt and a top and it had this print. That was very limited to one season. In fact, I think I wore that once, which is something I would never do now, and it's shocking. But one season wonders are definitely a habit to break in 2021. Shopping habit number two to break in 2021 is the, oh, but it was on sale purchases. Right, so my rule of thumb when it comes to shopping in the sales is if I didn't want to buy it at full price, don't buy it now just because it's in the sale. And I know I've heard this from so many women, I used to say it myself, but you'll say things like, oh, it's such a bargain. Oh my God, I picked this up for X amount. It's so cheap, such a bargain, da 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 It's not a bargain if you never wanted it in the first place. That's actually the reverse of a bargain. That is wasted money. Because if, you, if it's something that you just never wanted, it's something you don't need, it's something you bought just for the fact that it's got discount and I've been there, I have been fully immersed in that temptation. I'd be lying if I said every time Black Friday rolls around, I didn't go online and scroll certain online retailers just to see if there is any bargains. I did it the Black Friday just gone, I went on to, it was Louisa Vieroma and I went on that website because there was a flash 40% off and I think I've actually told this story before, so I'm sorry if you've already heard it, but I just found myself scrolling for no reason at all. There was nothing that I actually wanted because it was in a weird sort of time of the year where I hadn't started planning spring, summer, and there was nothing I needed for autumn and winter. So there was nothing I actually needed, but I was on there because I was like, these are luxury goods at 40% off that's too good to turn down. And I just found myself scrolling. And in the end, I sort of came to my senses and thought, 
you need to just leave and just go and watch some telly. So when it comes to sale shopping, my word of advice is to make yourself a list, especially when it comes to Black Friday, because as I've just said, those sales are in your face in a massive way. Make yourself a list, consult your wish list if you're wish listing along with me, as you might have seen in some of my other videos, that's how I compile what I need or what I want within my wardrobe. Consult your wish list and see if there's anything that you can pick up in the sales. Because I'm not saying sale shopping is bad, sale shopping is great. I have had some amazing bargains which I wear loads from in the sales, but it's just trying to get that fine line between wasting money and actually investing it wisely into your wardrobe. Right, my third shopping habit to break in 2021 is buying on credit or buying with credit. With credit, on credit, whichever. And what I mean by this, because I feel like I need to clarify this slightly, is buying with money that you don't have. Because I know there's a lot of people out there who are really savvy with money and really good and you're excellent at, and I say you're, because I'm not within this category of people. Simon is my good money person. I am the polar opposite. I am like, yeah! <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about buying things on credit because it's a temptation and it's money that you don't have. And the reason I say this is because I am from what was called the store card generation. This was a period of time, and I think the laws have actually got a lot more strict on this now, because you don't see this happening as much. But this was a period of time where when, I was gonna say young people like myself, I'm not a young person anymore, but back in the day when I was a young person, as soon as you turned 18, you could be out shopping. I remember being in Topshop and the first thing the person said to me was, do you have a store card? You can get 20% off this today. And there we go, it's that little discount thing coming back in as well into their sales pitch. And I was signed up to every store card under the sun. I had three credit cards, I think. But for me, I fortunately, I got into some debt, but not massive debt. Like I was quite, I don't wanna use the word lucky, but it's the only word I can think of. I was quite lucky that they actually didn't give me loads of credit and I didn't manage to accrue as much debt as what I used to read in the papers or see on the news of some people had accrued tens of thousands. So my tip for anyone that's kind of succumbing to that temptation of a credit card or a store card, I don't actually, do store cards even exist anymore? I don't know if they do. Um, but my tip would be, and this is still something that I do, is sell to buy. And I've spoken about this in lots of my other videos. I'll leave some links down in the description box below to some helpful videos to show you guys how to make the most of sell to buy. But it's have a look in your, in your wardrobe, your existing wardrobe, or even around your home, and just see if there's anything that you have there of any value that you don't want and you don't use. Don't just go selling your entire home to fund, you know, a Chanel handbag, but see if there's stuff in there that you don't use and that you can sell because this is, it's value that you've got sitting there, which you could put towards something which you're obviously craving. And speaking from experience again, there's honestly nothing more satisfying, way more satisfying than that dread of having your credit card bill come. There's nothing more satisfying than saving up for whatever it may be, weeks, months, years, and then buying that dream item. That is a good feeling. And I also think that you appreciate that more as well. Right, moving on to my fourth shopping habit to break in 2021, and that is just in case purchases. Now, I know there's gonna be lots of you who are guilty of the just in case purchases. I have definitely been guilty of just in case purchases. Even as far back, or as far back as, as not so far back as last year, I bought something which was a just-in-case purchase and now I've still got it, it's still got the tags on. In all fairness, I did not see the pandemic lasting this long, so I'm gonna let myself off for that just-in-case purchase. But what I mean by just-in-case purchases, you're out shopping and I feel like point number four kind of comes hand in hand with the sale point, buying things just because they're on sale. I feel like these two very much go hand in hand. 
you're out shopping, you see, let's use a dress for example, an occasion dress, something that you might wear to a wedding, but you don't have any weddings, but you might have a wedding, so you should buy it just in case. Those are the just in case purchases. And I think definitely if the last year has taught us anything, it's that we can't guarantee what's going to happen in the future. If you have a wedding and you feel like you want a new outfit, go for it, go shopping, second hand, vintage, or if you wanna buy new, whatever floats your boat, treat yourself to a new dress or suit or whatever it may be. But if you don't have a wedding to go to, don't buy something for an imaginary wedding, just in case. Right, my fifth and final shopping habit to kick in 2021 is impulse purchases. And again, I feel like this one kind of also slots into some of the other habits that I've already mentioned. But impulse purchases, once again, are something I have definitely made over the years. And these can come from lots of different places, but these are purchases which you do not think about at all. You're literally just almost blindsided by what I call shopping lust. It's like the just the want. I want it, I want it now. And I used to do this all the time with it handbags. I used to see them on Instagram or Pinterest or wherever, even going back as far as like when I was an in my late teens, I used to see things on celebrities, like before we had Instagram. I would see them in magazines and on reality shows, and I'd be like, right, that's it, I want that. Fortunately, back then, I didn't have the money to buy those, but obviously, as I've got older and my um, income has increased, I've fallen into the trap. And it can be for any, any literally anything. You could watch an ASOS haul and want to buy five items from the 12 that you've been seen, but just because you've seen them on, I don't know, your favorite influencer, whatever it may be, it's impulse purchases that you've literally just seen, not thought about at all, and just gone and essentially blindly bought them. Right, so my tip for avoiding impulse purchases, um, aside from me just saying, just think about it, <laughs> is, which is very easy for me to say, is to go back to that wish list process, so the making a wish list, and having things on the wish list and thinking about them, going back to it. As you all know, I make my wish list on Pinterest because it's very visual, so I can see that item every time I go on that wish list. Do I still have that shopping lust for it? Do I still have that real want and need for it? And every time I look at that wish list, I'm thinking about how I would style it. I'm also doing other research outside of the wish list with outfits like, oh, this blue shirt, how could I style this in lots of different ways so that I make sure that if I do buy this, that I will wear it a lot. So that would be my tip to avoid making any impulse purchases. Right, so there we have it. Those were five shopping habits to kick in 2021. I could have literally made a massive list on so many other shopping habits. And as a lot of you guys will know, um, that I am a big ambassador for shopping secondhand. Um, and I know that there might be some of you that are wondering why I didn't mention shopping secondhand in this video as like a habit to favor. But actually I feel like a lot of those points that I've just mentioned, a lot of those habits within this video also apply to secondhand. Just because something is secondhand doesn't mean that it's a useful purchase if you've bought it just in case or as an impulse. It's still technically wasted money for you if it's not gonna be something that you get wear out of. Right, so that's me and little Bumblebee done for today. Thank you as always for watching. We're gonna go and check and see if the smoothie maker has gone and I will see you next time. Bye. You gonna say bye, B? For anyone that doesn't speak dog, he just said bye. Yeah, he said, yeah. He said, I was on this video, Mum, and he said, I was amazing. He said, I'm gonna be the star of the show.